What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Diamond Studios podcast. Um, we are joined by the one and only Josh, aka Pilot, um, incredible musician, incredible musician. Um, Josh, just take like uh, 30 seconds, introduce yourself, tell the people what you do. Yeah, I think the simplest way to put it is father first, musician second, and then kind of just creative outside of that, man. I like to do everything creative, photography, all that fun Heck stuff, yeah. but yeah. Heck yeah. Another thing you do very well is connect. Thanks, man. Dude, I don't I don't know how you do it. I have no idea. You have like, you haven't, oh man, it stresses me out. you have have such an incredible following on just across all platforms and um just the way you make everyone feel like an actual human being blows my mind like you know some people just naturally have it and you seem to be you just seem to be one of those guys i don't know how you do it yeah i think it just really comes down to like i don't know man when you're talking to people and you know if they're giving you like the real time of day you can kind of tell you know yeah, and it just I think it just kind of boils down to just I don't know, kind of just like talking to people how you want to be talked to and like how you appreciate being treated, you know. And so, yeah. I mean, I'm not to say I'm like perfect or anything like that, but that's at the end of the day, that kind of just like what I strive for. I just want to be able to talk yeah. to people like regular, you know. Yeah, that that makes sense, and I love the the raw aspect of it. Like, you're just a real human. Um. Was it always like that? Or was there like a defying moment where you were just like, all right, I need to be real instead of, cause I, I have the, I don't know. I have the stupid need to put on like an artist persona, you know, when I'm on socials. Um, but that's not necessarily what I want to do, but it just happens to be that way. Um, so was there a moment where you were just like, you know what, I'm just going to be as real as possible. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, man. Kind of like what you're saying. I don't think there's anything wrong with like necessarily if like if you're kind of putting on that artist persona. Um, because as long as it's done the right way, because I think the way something like that somebody told me before, like actually kind of help with my stage presence is like when you're performing live, you're no longer Josh, your pilot. And so it's like a way for me to get out of my own head is kind of just like it doesn't matter if I'm performing for one person, you know, in the room or hundreds or thousands or whatever it is. Like at the end of the day, I need to go up there and perform and people are, are coming to see me. It's not like, you know, and so I'm, I, I want to put on. So a way that I got past my nerves is thinking about that transition from it's like you're Josh to all of a sudden your pilot, you're, you know, you you speak about this this uh this topic in this song, you know, you're you're doing this and this other song. And so um yeah, long story short, man, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong putting on a persona, but for me, I definitely know noticed that uh, I think the best way for me to put it is that I stop trying to like cater to certain people or like certain like groups or whatever like that, and yeah. just started writing kind of exactly the way that i wanted to write and i feel like that um opened up transparency a lot more you know it just became a lot more authentic it felt more natural in the writing it definitely connects better with people when they're hearing it like kind of what we were talking about a second ago it's like you know if you're talking to somebody and you're like trying to hype yourself up and you're being inauthentic, people are going to be able to tell that it doesn't really matter what you're saying. You know, it's like the energy in it. And so I feel like music is really the same way. You can kind of tell when an artist is maybe trying to push a little too hard to give off a certain uh, image or whatever. And then you can tell when an artist is actually writing about something that they really care about or something that they were actually really feeling in that, in that moment when they're writing, you know? And so Yeah, I think really, I just got to a point, man, um, when I became a father and then I was like, um, lost my dad, you know, just like many years back where I just kind of life got real, you know, and at that point, it's like, you don't really care about anything except actually figuring out what you need to do in life and like 
you know, what's important to me. And for me, that's God, that's, you know, being a good father, being a good role model, uh, and just being able to provide, you know? And so when you, I feel like when you have all these priorities in place, you kind of stop messing around with like all this extra stuff. You just want to do exactly what you want to do in the exact way that you want to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And you know, it's amazing how well it translates through music. Um, you were talking about how, you know, most of the time you can kind of sniff out when an artist doesn't mean what they're, what they're singing. Um, I mean, obviously you've got artists who are just naturals at, or well, actually they're very well trained, like vocally trained. Whereas like, you know, I'm not like that. You know, I've got to have some form of passion or emotion behind what I'm singing in order for my, my music to like, I guess sound good um because uh that that's kind of how um I ended up writing for other people it was like I would write music but no matter what I did to sing it it just would not sound good it just it didn't sound good at all and um I just realized I was supposed to be you and wear a beanie (laughs) but I forgot to put it on. I don't rock these quite like you do. Uh, we got to cancel this whole podcast and restart, yeah. man. <laughs> we got to start over from scratch. <laughs> I was going to put on, I just sidetracked so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> uh, I was going to put on that beard, that little beard thingy back there. Oh, uh, dude, that would have been so in character of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, it totally slipped my mind. I was going to dedicate. Um, but yeah, it's it's so... Yeah wow that adhd moment um it is it's such a real thing like being able to sing um like let your music connect with you um on that level but um no i have a mad mad appreciation for just how real you are with you're connecting with fans and then you know and it's not a fake thing like anytime we have a conversation um any like whether it's face to face or just dming like it's just a real thing you know and um, like you apologized <laughs> through, through our our DM, you sent me that apology, and I was like, like this guy's so real right now. Like I don't know, you were just upfront and and blunt about everything. Yeah, life happens, man. I just felt bad about it because I was like, you know what, this guy's giving me a, um, a platform to speak, and he's like reaching out to me about this thing, and it's like. I don't want to seem ungrateful or anything like that. So eventually no. I was like, damn it. No. Like- <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not come across like that whatsoever. Um, because I think you had, um, well, I think you were just coming out of like a face or a social media um, rest or what do you call it? Like a, a break. You were taking a break from social media. Um, I think. Is that timing right? Yeah. So sort of like, so when I was talking to you, I kind of took like, just like recently, just like a, like a couple of days ago or whatever, whenever, like a week ago, whenever that was, um, I had already been online for like a little while, but initially, um, I was off or not completely off, but I was, I was largely inactive for probably about a year or so. Cause basically like, <laughs> I got I got uh what's the word Facebook like restricted me so it's like um for some kind of post or something I did like a year and a half ago or something like that and so they basically restricted how many people could see my post and so to me it was just like I don't know I would still post and everything because I you know I still appreciate everybody that that does see it but at the same time it's like um I don't know, man. I had like, well, at the time it was like a hundred thousand followers, but they're limited to like a couple hundred people. I'm like, I just, maybe this is a sign that I should be concentrating on real life anyway. And like getting my, my mental health right and spending more time with my daughter, you know, like spending more time with God and, you know, get trying to get back in the creative spirit. Cause I hadn't been creatively inspired for a minute, you know? So I kind of just took that. Yeah, exactly. So I just kind of took that that chance, man, to 
just to reset. And then it was kind of funny because it's like, by the time I finally was able to get back online because I wasn't restricted anymore, that's when I started feeling like I was more inspired at that point. And I felt yeah. like I kind of got in a better headspace. And so it all kind of worked out, you know? Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. I've thought about, um, cause I know and just in the time that, that I've known you, it's been, I think I've seen you do like three, two or three, like social media breaks. Um, and then there's you and like, I follow all of your stuff super close. And then, um, oh man, actually, I think ironically enough, it's NF who just dropped an album. Um, mm. so NF stays off social media. Um, but you know, I watch, I follow both of you guys super close and, um, I look at like the benefits and whenever, um, well, I don't ever get to talk to NF in person. Cause I don't know him like that. I don't know, him, <laughs> but I'm sitting here talking about him. Like I know him. I don't, I don't. Um, but like whenever he posts or talks about, you know, the benefits of staying off and uh, you know, the same with you, I thought about it just taking like a good break. Um, but you know, I own local businesses and unfortunately, like social media plays a massive role in in anything local, like mm -hmm. getting stuff out because like newspaper ads and stuff like that, they just don't work like they used to. So hopefully one day I can just let go and just take a break because it'd be great just getting off and letting um, letting the juices flow, like the creative juices. Uh, I find myself all the time I'll be writing and like trying to take some personal time. Dude, social media is good at taking that attention. It's you, you like get on on accident, you know. It's like it's so accessible from your phone. You yeah, and it's like you'll be like starting to scroll on accident. Like, now what am I doing? Like, yes, <laughs> why am I wasting my time with this? <laughs> yeah, or like someone someone will send you a message, you know, and um, that happened probably three or four times today already. I was working on like scheduling. Um, some stuff for the studio and someone sent us a message, open the message, read it, get out of it. And then you're scrolling. And it's like, what? Next thing you know, you've wasted like two or three minutes per message. You know, that adds up to like 10, 15 minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so what does, um, so everyone I think knows that you're, you're a father, that you're, you're just kind of doing life on your own with you and your daughter. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that balance look like for you between your music career and having a healthy relationship with your daughter? Um, man, it's, 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 it's weird. I feel like I'm always trying to find the right balance because of course the balance is always going to be tilted towards her, you know, like that's yeah. always going to be first, but then it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like you have to have so many things in place to like feel like you're you're happy in life. You know, you got to have, you got to feel content with your family life. You got to feel content with your career. You have to feel con you're content, like uh, creatively. And uh, for me speaking specifically, I have to be like, I have to feel healthy with, you know, my, my relationship with God and stuff. And so, right. man, it's just like a balance, you know? Um, and that's something I'm always trying to tweak like every day, but I feel like the thing that's been, helping me stay pretty consistent is um, first of all, yeah, spend time with my daughter. Cause I know that like, if anything else I'm doing, if I'm not, if I feel like I'm neglecting time with her, then I'm just, nothing else is going to come easily. I'm not going to be able to write. I'm not going to be able to do anything. You know, I'm be feeling guilty. I'm not going to be happy and stuff. And so that's the first sense. thing. Yeah. Shoot. But, I just, that I don't have kids yet. I don't have kids. Um, but like, you know, like you mentioned, like it goes God and then my wife would be next and then, you know, career. So I guess God, family, career that in that order and like finding time, you know, to do uh, your morning devotions, time with, you know, time with, you know, my, in my case, my wife and then my family and then business stuff, dude, it's so, it's so hectic. Um, but it's really cool that we uh, we just did an interview with um, Brandon Davis 
and he has um oh gosh four or five kids i think and then a wife and a really successful music career right now like he's just he just keeps growing he's amazing and um like getting to hear from people who are doing this music thing and uh, balancing family and life um i'm hoping like you know platforms like this are going to give people more of an insight cuz I don't know. I talk to so many people and they think it's so easy, you know, but creativity doesn't necessarily have any respect for, for your personal life. But like it just shows up and you're like, really, dude? Right. <laughs> like I'm in the middle of something. Um, so like being a creative person and being a musician, it's it's just a tough thing to do. Um, so what what advice would you give uh, someone who is um in shoes kind of like yourself or or just looking to grow their music career yet balance a successful relationship with with family or friends what advice would you give them yeah i mean i w- i would always recommend and it's like like i said i don't have the balance down to a t either but i found that whenever i apply the formula of you know the things that are real in life first like family you know Mm -hmm. for me this you know at the end of the day it's like when you're much older you've gone through 30 different jobs or how you know two jobs whatever amount of jobs you've gone through um you know you're gonna retire you're gonna quit you're gonna move on to something else but it's like you're gonna have your the people that you love in your life that whole time that's what you're gonna really care about you know when you're on your deathbed and stuff and so i feel like For me, that's something I'm always trying to tip the scale to first is family, you know? And I think that's also, like you mentioned, like your wife, like I think that's why it's so important to have a supportive partner, which I'm very much lucky enough to have um, and, you know, spend time with them, make sure your home life is good, you know, because then they're also going to nurture like. I feel like if you have that right, then they're also, you know, they're going to have their best interests for you. And if you start to veer off in the wrong direction, they're going to be able to call you out on that. Yeah. You know, be like, hey, I know I noticed you've been really stressed out or, hey, you haven't really been, you know, spending much time with music. And I know you love that. You know, is there something yeah. you want to talk about? You know, all those sorts of things. I think it really comes down to like the super important things like family first and then. Of course, you have to have financial stability, so you got to take care of that. But also, it's like, I don't know, I'm a really big believer that if you have like this passion, you have this passion in your heart that you can't really, you can't really get that. You know, that's like, that's either you have that or you don't. And each person has a different passion. And I feel like, so I feel like if you were to neglect that, it'd be kind of like, um, I don't know. I feel like it'd be a waste of a gift, you know? And so I feel like you have to really pay attention to like, um, you know, what God has called you to do, or if you're not a believer, just what, you know, what your, what your heart is kind of pulling yeah. you towards. I feel like you really have to pay attention to that and acknowledge it. Um, well, kind of, um, just taking care of your other responsibilities. So, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, I'm veering off from a very serious topic. There's a cat. <laughs> two. <laughs> There's two cats. Oh, that's fun. You can actually see his leg right there. I just realized it. <laughs> yeah, he's chilling, bro. Dude, I was sitting here and I was like, I think I saw maybe, <laughs> maybe a foot twitch. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Okay. It's just a cat. It's just a cat. Um, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, just I got pom pom uh somewhere else, but she's hiding somewhere. Where did that name come from? My daughter for sure. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, what's the first one's name? Jerry. <laughs> like like Tom and Jerry. You have Jerry and Pom Pom. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I have a cat named Blueberry. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. My family has had this thing with cats where like we just get black cats. Um they just keep reappearing. And um, 
So my wife found one at my parents' house and we ended up keeping it. And uh, we've gone through so many berries. So every black cat that we found, we named it after some berry. So like we had like blueberry, blackberry, raspberry. Um, oh gosh, what a, I don't know. But we've had a lot of berries. A lot. <laughs> so we've got one. Her name is Blueberry. I don't know why, but that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, sorry, rabbit trail. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Cat trail, I suppose. So what's what's new for you? What's coming up next? You well, you just released a single, um, pills, yeah, pills, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah, thanks, man. Fantastic. Think, the absolutely. visuals are great. The train, so peaceful. Yeah, um, I've been uh, I've been a really big fan of like, have you have you have you gone on like YouTube and seen the Lo-Fi Girl? Yes, like, absolutely. Every day. yeah, I feel like many many people are familiar with her but anyway like um so i'll listen to that while i'm like working on my on my laptop or just whatever you know i'm trying to do some kind of like study st uh, yeah. style thing and i'll be like having that on the background and then for whatever reason like my daughter she like she's super duper into sonic and so she asked me she's like she's like daddy do you do they have like a tells one of that and i was like Probably actually. And so I like search on YouTube and so I, I started going through like they have like Simpsons, they got uh Sonic, they got Tails, they got Tails and Sonic, they got Knuckles, they got pretty much any cartoon lo-fi thing ever. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even like think to think uh to search for that. And so anyway, I've been on this like huge like lo-fi anime kick sort of thing lately. Yeah. And um I don't know, man. Um, I didn't really have access to do like a full on music video this time around. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do like a lyric video, but with some like really cool type of like backdrop, something that kind of just like, you know, something that I'm feeling right now, something that resonates with like where I'm at right now. And then just kind of, I felt like it hit pretty good with um, just the, the theme of the song yeah. and just kind of my personal yeah. interest at the moment. <laughs> It definitely did. Um, have you ever tried to do like a 24 hour lo fi loop thing? Like just play it the whole, like for 24 hours straight or what? Like, no, like start your own 24 hour channel. Oh, man. No, I haven't actually. I haven't, I hadn't thought about that. Cause I mean, you also produce, produce music, right? Like you make beats and stuff. I yeah, mean, not as yeah. often as I used to, but yeah, that's kind of like yeah. how I got into the industry in the first place. That's right. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a whole conversation about this. Um, we recently, um, I don't know, we, I say recently, we've been listening to lo-fi stuff for ever. Like, we just have lo-fi playing at all times in the background of the studio. Um in like every room so like there's some going in my office where i'm at now in the spaceship and the riding lounge like it's just always going and um we got the itch like you know what let's just produce some lo-fi beats so we produced like um i think like a three or four hour loop of stuff but to get a 24-hour channel on youtube dude it's way more complicated than than i thought yeah, that's actually interesting. I don't know how you would um like I don't know the first thing about it. So I don't know how you would actually like have a continuous 24-hour loop of like it playing without yeah. it. Yeah. It's like a third party live stream thing. Oh. It's, it's weird, but it requires like a bunch of coding. And I tried it, and then you also have to pay for like an extra server to send to it's weird. It's weird, but we tried it and it was like, I don't know, it's just too much work right now. <laughs> That's why I see all like a whole bunch of the ones that are just like five hours long or four hours long. It's just like a yeah. long upload or whatever. Yep. Um, you know, we tried to make the argument of like, I mean, we register the music so that every time they're played, we get paid. But I mean, you only paid a few like fractions of a penny. So I don't know if it's worth renting a server yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
hopefully hopefully we'll get paid more eventually well here's the thing that i've realized man um in the last like six months when was it i don't know i started like monetizing my stuff on facebook i think it was at like yeah mid october of last year 2022 um and there's actually a lot of opportunities now for creators, even if you don't have like that big yeah. of a fan base. I think it's just like they have like a minimum of like you have to have like 10,000 followers, then you have to have a certain amount of like um, viewership time or whatever. But after that, you have pretty good um, opportunity to make money off of videos. So I don't know. I mean, in yeah. the future for you guys, maybe that'd be a thing where you could just release, you know even 15, yeah. 20 minute, like low five videos, just kind of on like a consistent basis, you know? Yeah. Uh, we did end up releasing like that, that whole video. Um, but it's just, we can't monetize YouTube yet. So we have to go through and like, you know, license the music or, you know, go through mm -hmm. the whole publishing side yeah. of things. Um, but there's a lot of things that like a lot of musicians don't know or a lot of artists, um, I don't know. We only have- Oh, they got us on the time, the time restriction, huh? They do, look at that. <laughs> They're like, you better hurry up. <laughs> um, so, but you can monetize like your lyrics and everything as well, which is amazing. So like, um, you know, you can tap on Apple Music and like it scrolls through your lyrics as you sing. That you can monetize that as well. So you're getting like music royalties and um, royalties from your lyrics being read. And then if you want to get like super technical, you can also monetize um, your cover arts, which is crazy. So like there's a lot of avenues for you to do, but it takes so much takes so much work and then at the end of the day once you're at a level like an a-lister definitely worth doing all the all the avenues but like once you're to i don't know i think last time i looked i have a total of maybe three thousand monthly listeners across all streaming platforms so like i don't know if that's worth you know monetizing all of that because i mean it costs money to monetize all that but there's a lot of avenues, a lot for extra income, but it's quite the, it's quite the trip. Well, it's to also hard to take advantage of as, you know, when you're an independent artist and you're acting as all these different positions, as opposed to what you're talking yeah. about, like an A-list or, you know, eventually you're going to have a team that'll be able to take care of that better than you ever were able to do it by yourself. And so, Heck yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy um we have these conversations so we offer like consultations here at the studio and um man the amount of artists that are just like they're unfamiliar and uneducated on that side of the world you know like most of them think that you come in you record a song and you just leave with a mix and master like radio ready radio ready ready version of the song and um when in fact, you know, most of the time it takes two, three sessions, maybe two, three months to finish, you know, your art. It's, it's crazy. It's such a, um, especially to non-musicians, it's a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, unfamiliar place of business or way of business. It's so, um, unfamiliar well one thing i noticed that you guys were um um doing that i kind of liked man was um it, it looks like you guys are releasing like little podcast clips i just yeah. on based on like varying topics and i felt like i saw one about oh uh, it was like just be, basically being ready for the studio so you're not kind of like wasting your time and your creativity <laughs> yeah. in there and um that's cool, man. I, I really like that. It's like, I don't know if you guys are already really snatic like, on your YouTube page or your Facebook, but that's like, that's stuff that I've, I've always enjoyed watching myself, you know, it's just like fun Sweet. little things like that, that kind of help out artists, you know? Yeah. And that, 
that's kind of going with the um you know like I, I mentioned the whole restructure of the podcast is um balancing music and the business and like music business and the balance of both with life um it's it's a difficult thing to do and uh so we like to walk people through like if you come into the studio prepared um you know obviously don't get in the way of creativity like creativity flow you know you you have to do that um but if you come in prepared you know it makes a difference when you leave the studio like it's a domino effect when you leave the studio happy and you feel accomplished and you maintained focus you go home and you carry that same attitude home like <clears throat> it's the exact same like if you have a really crappy day at work and you take it home you just make the entire environment crappy at home but it's the exact same concept but most people um since it's a different environment that people aren't familiar with they view it differently but it's the same thing you come in prepared and you leave feeling accomplished most of the time most of the time because sometimes you come in prepared but creativity just takes a toll and does whatever the heck it wants so sometimes you just leave with a different idea than you came in with but no it, it's an important thing you know we see a lot of people um they come in and you know yes we're making money off of it but at the same time we want to see product be released you know and um I know other studio engineers and other studio owners, they've got to feel the same way. People come in, they spend a bunch of money, but there's never anything to show for it on either end. And, you know, for me, it puts a pit in my stomach knowing that people are like attempting to invest in themselves, but they're not playing their cards wisely when they're actually doing the action, you know? If that makes well, sense. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And I think that's okay. also why it's important to uh, find, um, you know, why you, you choose your studio wisely because, you know, um, yeah. you're also going to have engineers. And if you're at the right place, that they're going to give you ideas that help, you know, yeah. make the process more efficient and, you know, kind of more streamline your creativity, you know, because, yep. um, yeah, I think that's just a really big part of it too. Cause it's like, you know, artists are concentrated on their art so much that they do forget about technical aspects. And so I've been to good studios before in the past, and I've been to studios that like they weren't bad, but I'm like, I just wasn't feeling the vibe. And I'm, you know, I don't yeah. feel creative while I'm in there. And so yeah, I think it's really important, man, just in general, like who you network with, you know, just really yeah. um how much you're going to progress. So, yeah, that's very true. Um, all right. Well, we should probably close this out because zoom is about to kick us off. <laughs> yeah, um, <I> see that. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, we always talk for like a minute or so after we close out the podcast. So, um, is there any, anything you'd like to like to plug before we close it out? Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I've been, um, starting to get back into writing mode once again and, um, I know a lot of people have been asking me about music and stuff and I hadn't really put out new music in quite a while until I put out pills, but, yeah. um, yeah, I'm starting to work on a ton of music right now. I got like a cover. I'm, I'm recording a video too. I got an original song that I just completed and I did a music video too. So Sweet. got all kinds of fun stuff finally, man. I'm just like, I feel like I'm really creatively in the pocket right now. So I'm just yeah. like really excited to push it out. So. Dude, yeah, amazing. I would just say in, in general, just to stay, stay, uh, stay tuned. Sweet. And you can find him on, on social media, uh, P1 and then L-O-T. Just look him up and then give him a follow. And then you'll be joining like, you know, 10K plus other people because um, he's amazing uh, across everything in the music, social media, everything. You're just you've got it, man. It's amazing. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, man, for hopping on here and having, again, casual conversation. I knew that would happen <laughs> stay true to any structure whatsoever. Um, but uh, thanks for hanging out with us. And to everybody that uh, tuned in, that watched this or listened to this, thank you so much. 
Um, let us know what you think about it. And uh, hopefully we'll do more of these in the future. All right. Peace out.